If you want the best GPU for your solution, this video is going to be for you. I will show you the best GPUs in terms of performance and also in terms of price of performance for 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolution. And I will also show you the level of performance that you will get with each GPU. All the links to these graphics cards will be down below in the video description. With that being said, let's start. For 1080p resolution, in terms of gaming performance, I recommend the RX 6700 XT or the RTX 4060 Ti. Both of these GPUs will give you amazing performance at 1080p and I believe that any GPU that's better than these two are more for 1440p resolution than for 1080p. On a 15 game average from TechSpot, at 1080p ultra settings, on very high demanding titles, the RTX 4060 Ti was able to average 111 FPS and the RX 6700 XT over 100 FPS. So both of these once again will give you amazing performance at 1080p and I believe anything over this will be an overkill. If you want to play esports titles, if you pair these GPUs with the right CPU, you will be able to achieve 360 plus FPS on average or 240 plus once again depending on the CPU that you pick. And it also depends on the games and the settings. These GPUs are going for around $350, the RTX 4060 Ti is usually a bit more expensive at $375 to $400 bucks. and remember I'm talking about pure gaming performance. If you want the best price to performance GPU for 1080p, I recommend the RX 6650 XT. This one is about 12 to 15% slower than the 4060 Ti and 6700 XT, but it's going to cost you around 230 bucks, so over $100 less than any of the other two GPUs, and it's going to deliver excellent 1080p performance. On that same test, the 6650 XT was able to average 85 FPS, which is still a very smooth experience considering we are are talking about high demanding titles on ultra settings so if you turn down the settings too high you can expect even higher frame rates for 1440p resolution the best gpu in terms of performance is the rtx 4070 ti super or the rx 7900 xt on a 12 frame average from TechSpot once again on ultra settings high demanding titles the rtx 4070 ti super was able to average 824 fps and the 7900 xt 827 fps both of these are very similar in terms of rasterized performance the the RTX 4070 Ti Super is around $80 more expensive, but it's going to give you the NVIDIA technologies such as DLSS, which is the better upscaler, then you get a better level of ray tracing, and it's usually better for content creation and productivity apps. So I would personally choose the 4070 Ti Super, but if you don't care about the NVIDIA technologies, then the 7900 XT is a good value GPU for 1440p resolution. Anyway, whether you choose the NVIDIA or AMD GPU, you are going to be getting top tier performance performance for 1440p resolution and trust me when I say there's no game that you can't run at 1440p with these GPUs with an smooth experience and if you want to play easy to run shooters you can expect 240 to 360 plus FPS on average once again depending on the game the settings and also depending on the CPU. Now in terms of price to performance for 1440p I would recommend the RX 7800 XT or the RTX 4070 Super. On that same 12 frame average I've mentioned before the 7800 XT was able to average around 100 FPS and the 4070 Super 108 FPS. You have to keep in mind here that the 4070 Super is a hundred dollars more expensive. So you are paying more to get that extra giving performance, but you also get once again the NVIDIA features that might be important to you. And remember, both the 7800 XT and 4070 Super will allow you to play at 1440p ultra settings at high frame rates. And if you want to play easy to run titles, you can expect 240 plus FPS on average as well. And then for 4K resolution, if you want the best performance, then the RTX 4090 is the only option, but it's also the most expensive GPU in the entire market going for around $2,000 depending on when you're watching this video. Maybe it's a bit cheaper, maybe it's a bit more expensive, but at that point, if you are willing to spend $2,000, you might as well spend the extra if it's a bit more expensive. On that same 12 frame average, but this time at 4K ultra settings, the RTX 4090 was able to average 112 FPS, making it the fastest GPU in the entire chart, but of course the most expensive one. It's also the best one in terms of ray tracing performance you get all the nvidia technologies available so if you don't care about money you just want the best of the best this is by far your best option but if you want the best price to performance when it comes to 4k i highly recommend you the rtx 4070 ti super or rx 7900 xt which were the best gpus for 1440p resolution in terms of performance but here they are the best in terms of price to performance the 4070 ti super on that 4k 
test was able to average 70 FPS and the 7900 XT 75 FPS. Once again, the price gap between them is about $80 and you are getting a slightly faster performance from the 7900 XT when it comes to rasterized performance. But if you're going to be turning on the upscaler, which is FSR or the LSS, and you want to play with ray tracing on, the 4070 Ti Super is the clear winner and the one I recommend. So yes, remember that even if it says 70 FPS on a 12 game average on ultra settings at 4K, you can turn on the settings to high or turn on the LSS or perhaps frame generation if you like that or perhaps frame generation if that's something that you like and you will be getting much higher frame rates. But I would only recommend you turning on the LSS in games that are going to be ideal to use the LSS, for example, Cyberpunk 2077. Remember that you still have to pick the right CPU, otherwise you will be bottlenecking your GPU and getting stutters and not the frame rates that we are talking about here. So I highly recommend you watching my video on the best gaming PC builds for every budget and every resolution where I go over the best PCs in terms of performance and also in terms of price to performance for 1080p, 1440p and 4k resolution. All of those PCs in that video are going to have no bottleneck and I made sure that the components are compatible with each other. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one.